Hello and welcome everyone, I'm the Rimbling Director and today we are talking about Mean Girls 2024. I'm a big fan of the original Mean Girls, I am mature enough in my sexuality to just tell you that. Uh, <laughs> and I really liked this, I actually have never seen or heard anything except one song from the musical, so I went into this kind of blind just hoping that the music would be good because I never really care. I always, I'm one of those people that I'm not a big fan of when we take movies and turn them into musicals. Very rarely does it work, you know, like in the producers or something like that. I'm just not a big fan of that idea. But I went and saw this because, like I said, I am a big fan of the original. And I was pretty surprised by how much I liked it. So let's talk about this. We're going to talk about it on three different levels. So the first one is going to be as just a film by itself. So, in terms of just being a film, I thought this worked really, really good. Uh, it, it's very filmic. It does not feel like this was ever a stage show. It feels like this was made to be a movie. It does not feel like it was an adaptation of something else. That's pretty, that's pretty big for me because I hate it when they just take a musical from the stage and they put it on film exactly as it is on stage and they kind of use the, the camera as the the proscenium. I, I think that's kind of lame and boring. If I wanted to do that, then you could have just recorded a stage production. I'd have watched that. I love lots of recorded stage productions like the, the, uh, the, the, the last cast of Rent on Broadway or the 25th anniversary of Les Mis or Phantom. So I like that this felt like it had been kind of, I, I don't know, again, I didn't see the musical, so I don't know if they trimmed anything or cut anything out, but it feels like everything was, was built in a very filmic way, like it was designed to be a film, it couldn't be anything else. So that, high praise from me for that. There are only a few musical films I can think of that did that. One of them was the 2004 Phantom, directed by Joel Schumacher, and of course, uh, Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd adaptation. Those felt like movies. This felt like a movie. The dancing, uh, speaking of Sweeney Todd, it had the same sort of vibe, I thought, as the way Burton directed that film, where he kept it very personal. It's very mediums and close shots, uh, and the, the dance, there's dancing in this movie, but there's not a lot of it, and even when it's there, it feels like it is kind of taking advantage of the fact that this new Mean Girls is in a generation with social media. And so the dances feel kind of like TikTok dances. The the fact that um, they take advantage again of the, of the social media in general. Like there is a chorus a couple, a couple times when a chorus is singing and it is screens of Instagram screens, like Instagram reels. That was very clever, I thought, because in addition to, first off, it actually simplifies a lot of the filmmaking in, in, to do that. You don't have to choreograph this big number. But also, it was kind of cool, the idea that this is how we all think now, right? We all kind of think about things in the context of social media. So that was cool. Besides that, uh, also the, the, the updates in, in concerns with, with the social media was good. I thought it was, it was neat that Regina was not just kind of a popular mean girl at her school she's kind of a kind of a starlet in a way like a social media influencer i mean to the point where when she you know when stuff is happening with her i won't spoil anything but when stuff is happening with her there's a couple of the people and it shows like four million uh likes on this video so i thought that was an interesting update it was a cool way to go uh, something i really enjoyed about this as a film is the casting. The original Mean Girls are cast with people that are all very traditional movie star looking people. In fact, I think almost everybody from the original Mean Girls went on to have a career. And they're all beautiful people. <laughs> what I liked about this is that even Regina, though she is a very, very pretty girl, she looks more like a normal person. For instance, she's not painfully skinny. She is, b before we ever get to uh, Katie setting her up to gain weight, she's already 
a more average looking woman. I thought that sort of thing was nice. I thought that the the updates with the whole crew, the whole plastics, um, was just overall very good. The actors who play every one of these roles, I thought were great. Uh, it's especially cool to see the, the actors that return because there's a few of them. I won't, one, I'm not going to spoil, but it was during the math competition. And uh, I, again, I won't spoil it for you, but if you weren't expecting it, and I was not expecting it, it is, it is quite a treat. So second, as a musical, now I already talked a little bit about the filmmaking behind the musical, but as somebody who never heard the the soundtrack, the cast recording. I gotta say, I really liked the songs. The only complaint I have about them is a lot of them seemed very short. I don't know if they cut them down for this or if they cut out some of the songs, but it didn't seem like there was a whole lot of songs, and it seemed like some of them were quite short. Now, I know now it's becoming popular to have that sort of Dear Evan Hansen sort of thing where you have like six or, se you know, six or eight songs in your whole show, but I don't know. I mean, I... Listen, I, I like musicals like Phantom and Les Mis and uh, Next to Normal and, uh, and Rent that where, where the majority of it is singing. And I think that's good. And Hamilton, of course. I, you know, like, I, I would like to see, you know, more songs. And, uh, but it was fine. The songs were good. I guess it's better that I'm wanting more of them than that they overstayed their welcome. I especially liked Regina's song. Forgive me, I don't know the names of any of these songs. But I loved her introductory song where she introduces herself. I also love that whenever a number is going on, uh, big numbers that are kind of personal, almost soliloquy, are like two people talking to each other, everybody else freezes. Or they start moving very slowly. Are they jumped into certain dances. <laughs> I turned into Shatner just then, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I thought that was really rather a neat little touch. It's the sort of thing you typically see on stage, but the choreography of it in, uh, the, in the film, I thought was just, was just stellar. Uh, there's a couple fourth wall jokes that are really good. Like one of the girls apologizing that she said that one of the other guys was dragging during a musical number and she's like listen there was just so much stress to move the story along and I thought that was really really quite funny the direction of the musical numbers as a whole is great and the singing by the way I am a, a musical theater nerd I do have some training in singing I'm not gonna blow my own horn or act like I'm you know like some prodigy or anything, but I do know a little bit of what I'm talking about. And I thought the singing as a whole in this film was really, really great. There's also a, a wonderful joke where Tina Fey comes up and the music is going in the background, building up like she's about to start a song. And she goes, ah! <coughs> sorry. Anyway. And she, and the music cuts out like, that's funny. C congrats to Tina Fey, who I'm, I'm not a huge fan of her as an actress. I do like her as a writer. Uh, but I thought she was really, that was a good joke. And to be self-aware enough to not be one of those actors who can't sing and just keeps giving themselves songs like, well, I almost said something, but you know what? Hopefully if I ever become a bigger, like a big name director, I want to work with that person. So maybe I shouldn't say it. <laughs> okay. Finally, the third thing we need to talk about is in terms of, we talked about it as a movie, as a musical. Now we need to talk about it as an adaptation of an adaptation of, of an adaptation of an adaptation of a book because this is like adception okay mean girls was based on a book it became a movie the musical is based on the movie and then this movie is based on the musical based on the movie based on the book well i've never read the book that it was based on so i can't really give you any help there and again i never saw this the musical on stage so i can't really help you there either so what i'm just going to do is compare movie to movie i think the original Mean Girls is something of a masterpiece. Uh, I was a little bit young. I was not in high school when the original Mean Girls came out, but I was in high school when it kind of was showing that it had the staying power to be an icon of, of a couple different, maybe three generations now going into this movie. You know, it, it just seems like Mean Girls, it really is one of those like keen essential high school musicals, uh, sorry, high school moves, movies like um, The Breakfast Club. You know, I don't think it's ever gonna go away. What I loved about this was that when it updated, 
it only updated the things that really just needed to make to have, have it make sense. But in so many other ways, so little was updated. Like uh, most of these lines, you hear and and they're like always setting off bells because they're either the exact line or a variation. And I'm glad Tina Fey did that. I'm glad she didn't feel the need to kind of overcorrect by making this too modern. There's not a lot of 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 um, slang and stuff to try to seem hip with our generation. And in fact, whenever they use the slang, it's much the, the way Tina Fey did in the original Mean Girls. It feels like uh, they're kind of making fun of that sort of slang. And it is odd to hear some of these lines said in a different tonal inflection because you're so used to hearing a, a specific set of actors say them. But when you get past that, it's good. And the emotion of Mean Girls, I never thought about it until watching this movie, but the emotion of that movie really cried out to be made into a musical. I was very impressed with that, uh, that, that somebody saw that because I, I saw that it was, you know, a very, it's a very high emotion movie. It's teens. They're all hormonal, you know, but I, I wouldn't have personally thought oh, that needs to be made into a musical. So to the team that did make it into a Broadway show, Congratulations, and congratulations on it being made into a movie, too. I hope these songwriters get, you know, even more attention because of this movie, because these songs were really good. The director deserves some directors. There are actually two, I nearly forgot. I mean, there are tracking shots where some songs start off, uh, they go for, for a couple minutes in one shot, like the opening shot, uh, which goes through a garage door out into Kenya, uh, follows uh, our main character, Katie, around for a little bit, and then goes right into the, the, uh, the first day of school by pulling back a curtain. Now, these are obviously three different shots, three or four different shots stitched together, but they're seamless, and it's a fantastic effect. All of the actors deserve praise, but especially Anjuri Rice, who plays uh, Katie, as a replacement for Lindsay Lohan, excellent. I actually will never forget, I'm a big fan of hers actually, and I'll never forget the first time I saw her was in a movie called Every Day, which came out back in, oh gosh, 2015 or 16. Really good movie, didn't get a lot of attention, I don't think. But she was fantastic in that, she's fantastic in this, she's got a great singing voice. I thought she really played this role as well as Lindsay Lohan. And that, again, that's very high praise for me. I didn't come in expecting that. But she really did knock it out of the park. So congrats to her. Uh, congrats to everyone involved in this production. One last little note. I'll keep spoiler free as much as possible. If you've never seen either version of Mean Girls, there's a moment where somebody gets hit by a bus. And in the original, it is kind of shocking. But in this, I was expecting it. And it made me jump out of my skin when it happened. I mean, I actually was like, whoa, jumped in the air because it was so sudden and the noise is so loud. Uh, it's a little bit like when Russell Crowe hits that thing when in, in Les Mis. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so overall, I loved it. As a, as a movie musical, absolutely great. As a movie on its own, very, very good. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad to see that movie musicals are still alive. You know, we've had a few good ones in the last few for a few years, and right now we have two in theaters currently. Wonka and Mean Girls. Oh no, and The Color Purple, which I still haven't seen, but, but I've heard good things. So we have three musicals right in a row. I'd love to see a big comeback of musicals, and maybe we will if these movies keep being successful. So that's my two cents on Mean Girls. Definitely check it out if you get the chance. Thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you in the next one.